Final Cut Pro has had a major issue ever since its initial release. I have this shot of Big Ben I filmed a couple weeks ago, and let's say I want to add in a nice zoom to it. Well, I would come down here to the transform tool, come up to the top left, add a keyframe, move forward a bit, then we could go ahead and scale the shot up and move it into its position. Let's go ahead and push play, and you'll see that that gives us this weird wobble to the zoom. This is for a specific reason, because the zooming inside of Final Cut Pro has no sort of easing, whereas the position does have easing. So if we were to go ahead and right click on these different keyframes and change them over to linear, you'll see that we have a more accurate zoom and it doesn't have that strange wobble to it. But this has another problem, and that is that there's no easing to the zoom, which makes it feel really unnatural. And so that's why nearly three years ago, I created Pro Zooms. It's set out to fix all of these issues and make creating zooms inside of Final Cut Pro way easier. For those of you that don't know what ProZooms is, firstly, it has a super easy install process. You just double click the installer that you've downloaded and press install. Inside of Final Cut Pro, you'll have access to ProZooms in two different locations. One is in the top left under your titles. You'll see FCB's ProZooms, or you can find it in the exact same location here inside of your effects. To use ProZooms, you'll simply click and drag it down on the timeline. You can shorten its duration to what you like. And then you'll see that we have these on-screen controls, so I can go ahead and set that to zoom in up on Big Ben, just like so. We can adjust the scale of that zoom, and we can even adjust the rotation to our liking. We can also come over here to the title inspector and adjust the speed, so maybe we want a little bit faster of a zoom. We can enable or disable the build-in and build-out animations. There's really a ton of controls here, plus onion skinning, so we can line everything up as we need to. And there's even some sharpening which is super handy. But that's where things start to change with this video because I'm so incredibly excited to announce ProZooms 3.0, which is a completely free update to anybody who's previously purchased ProZooms. ProZooms 3.0 is not only adding some exciting new features, but it's focused on some major bug fixes that have been plaguing ProZooms ever since Final Cut Pro 10.8. You might have noticed that this timeline is not a proper 16 by 9 timeline. Previously with ProZooms, any non 16 by 9 timelines completely broke the plugin and it drove me crazy. You wouldn't be able to adjust the scale of your zoom box if your timeline wasn't 16 by 9. The only caveat to this change is now ProZooms is going to be in a square rather than a 16 by 9 format. So while it's not a perfect one-to-one -one representation of where you'll be zooming into, you'll still get a pretty good idea. This also resolved a large amount of other issues that ProZooms had. For example, Pro Multipan now works on all timelines and Pro Focus works on all timelines. So I can go ahead and add that down to my timeline. You'll see it gives me my box. I can go ahead, zoom in on Big Ben here, scale that up, place it off to the left side, and we can also adjust the scale of this box. But now we can get into the exciting new features for Pro Zooms. Firstly, we've got Pro Focus already here on the timeline. And if I go to the right side, we can now enable this gradient outline mode. And you'll notice that by default, that also enables the neon effect. So if we push play, we can see that we get this gorgeous looking outline, which is a super elegant way to present information on the screen. And this works if I change it over to the circle mode, which is super cool. We can adjust the width and height as needed. Another great addition to ProZooms is I've completely changed the graphic thumbnails of ProBurns. One of my most often requested items in my email was to be able to create zooms longer than two seconds. And that feature has already been inside of ProZooms since the beginning, and it was called ProBurns. But I've decided to change the thumbnail to add some clarity to this specific feature because ProBurns is used for slow zooms. So if we apply ProBurns down on the timeline, AKA slow zooms, you can see now that this zoom is going to take the entire duration of this title. I'm not going to break down all of the features of this particular effect because I have a great video, which again, I'll link at the end of this one, but hopefully this adds some clarity to what ProBurns does. It's created for doing slow zooms inside of Final Cut Pro. 
You might be asking yourself, why don't you just rename the effect? I would gladly do that, but if I were to rename ProBurns, it would completely break all of your old projects if you happen to use this effect. And that is something I'm super conscious of. I never, ever want to break an old project with these updates. So those are some of the minor additions to ProZooms, but now we can get to the meat and potatoes, which is ProZooms Plus and ProPans Plus. ProZooms Plus looks just like ProZooms from before, but it comes with some exciting new additions. The first one is you'll notice if I push play, we have some nice motion blur applied to our zoom, which is incredible. And we can come down here and adjust that motion blur amount to our liking. Maybe that's a little too severe, so we can back it off. We can also add in this prism option. So I'll push play and you'll see how it gives us that nice prism effect on the zoom. Or we can also enable defocus. So I'll disable the motion blur. We could drag up the defocus amount and the camera will actually blur as we're zooming in. So this can create some really dynamic looking effects. But on top of that, I've introduced a brand new zoom type. So if we come up here to the top right, unlike the other pro zooms, we don't have a slider. That slider was creating some severe limitations inside of Final Cut Pro. So I couldn't get as dynamic with the zooms as I wanted. So we now have this nice selector for all of the various zoom types, and you can see how long that zoom will take on the right side with the seconds indicator. We have this flow zoom, which I introduced in the last update of Pro Zooms. But if we take a look here at the bottom, we also have this overshoot option. And if we push play, you can see how the camera feels really dynamic. It zooms in past its final resting point and then settles back to where it needs to be. So this looks really great both zooming in and zooming out and just adds a lot of dynamism to our zooms, which I absolutely love. We can also go ahead and enable the rotation here so I can rotate this to my liking and it's going to receive all of that treatment which we've applied with the other effects. So this is really incredible. We also get access to the motion blur variations of these plugins. So you might be asking yourself, we already saw motion blur inside of ProZooms Plus. You might have noticed though, that's not super accurate motion blur. In fact, it's completely faking it using some zoom blurs and directional blurs blurs inside of Apple Motion. The motion blur variation of this is using actual motion blur to calculate how these zooms are done. And that's going to give you a much more accurate look to your motion blur. So pushing play, we can see that motion blur is applied here on the edges. You can really see it. And it also allows you to enable the prisms and the defocus amounts. It is a more accurate motion blur, but because of that, it also means you can't change how that motion blur looks. This is specifically due to some major limitations inside of Apple Motion, so there's no way for me to add those controls for you, which is kind of unfortunate, but maybe someday. That also means it's going to take a lot more performance. So this can really make your timelines trudge through if you don't have a powerful enough computer. And that is why I also introduced both the title variation and effects variation of the motion blur. That means you can use any of these different pans and zooms as you please. And so we'll go ahead and use the regular pro zooms and apply that on the timeline. And if we go ahead and apply the motion blur effect onto this, you'll see that now we have the motion blur happening here on the outer edges, and it's going to be accurate to how the camera is moving, which is really incredible. But maybe we don't want this entire title to have that motion blur effect because that's just really bogging down our system. We can just use the motion blur title variation, place that over only the part of the video that has the zooms applied to it. And you'll see that we're getting that motion blur on the edges. It's pretty subtle, but it is there. And that is just going to save us in performance in the long run. We only need to render out that specific section. So like I said, this is a completely free update to anybody who previously purchased ProZooms. And of course, if you purchase ProZooms now, you're going to get free updates for life. If you're interested in ProZooms, make sure you check out the links down below, or you can check out this video where I go way more in depth on a lot of the features inside of ProZooms.